follow new. Good luck. Uh, thank you. Hi guys, how are you? I hope uh, you are energized because it will be uh, an hour of speaking with me. So if you are not, uh, please keep, keep the attention to, to my sister over here. He's sleeping already. He's, he got bored of my presentation. His name is Jimmy. And if you will be interested in uh, today's presentation, uh, I will start with a big question. And it's a very important question. And it is related with uh, the picture that I started the presentation. Have you ever encountered yourself in front of the fridge thinking, what am I doing here? What was I supposed to do? Most probably that is a human memory leak that you just had. Yeah. So, sorry for sorry for a quick interruption. Can you check the uh, the, the internet connection uh, or mm -hmm. the microphone? There is a little noise. If you can try again, yeah. Let's see. Maybe mm -hmm. some more. What is wrong with the mic? I don't. Um... It has a little beeping over. Um, hmm, strange. Uh, maybe maybe maybe. Can you switch to the other headset that you had? Yes. Had? Sure. Uh, we did a check just before, and you know, it went just just right. And that's the the rule in even production. <laughs> you know how it is. I didn't uh, give any sacrifice to the demo gods today, so I think they are. Ah, yeah, the demo gods are angry on us. Oh my god. Yes, okay. yes. You are on wire, and please make sure you ch change the audio connection from your uh, Zoom. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I have no... no oh, it is now. Yeah. Yes, keep speaking, keep speaking. Yeah, it's okay. You think it's okay now, guys? You can uh, chat. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Michael. So it's okay now. Better. Good. Good. So let me start again. So uh, the purpose of... Uh, now it's too high. <laughs> so the purpose of uh, uh, this presentation is to better understand the, why the memory leak happens. And the brain actually has, when we have a human memory leak, the brain has a amazing capacity for the synapses to connect themselves and get your memory back and recover your memory. But the thing is with Java, you cannot, uh, this cannot happen. Once you, uh, once you get uh, uh, an object and once you get the, uh, you lost the reference to an object from the memory you cannot get it back this can only happen uh, with uh, with your memory let's go a little bit uh, up front so a little bit about me i'm mircha i'm a software architect at orange and uh, my passion about uh, memory and garbage collectors started uh, with a course that i attended five years ago of jvm performance tuning and when I'm not developing, I enjoy some hobbies like acting and home brewing. If you have any questions and you want to contact me, feel free to do it on the, on the mail or any social media account uh, that you may want. The agenda for today uh, will uh, include a little bit of theory of, at the beginning. And this is because in order to fix a memory leak, we need to understand why it appears and how the garbage collector uh, is working. Then we will go to the fun part. And uh, over there, we will analyze uh, actual production uh, crash investigation. So what to do when uh, our application crashed and how to analyze and discover the memory leak. And then uh, we will see how we can prevent this from happening and be uh, proactive about it. If you have any questions, feel free to use the chat. Uh, I want to uh, have an inter uh, interactive uh, session and uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. When I was a kid, uh, and usually this is happening in Romania, uh, our mother have a saying, Eu te-am făcut, eu te omor. In translation, that means I made you, I'll end you. And usually our mothers uh, tell us when we are naughty. And one thing that uh, you don't know about it uh, is that it's, it's a secret information you don't find on Wikipedia or on the internet is that when the C was made, uh, there was a uh, brainstorming session, what to do with uh, memory allocation and how to create objects. And over there in that brainstorming session, there was a Romanian mother 
and said, okay, I know what to do. We will make and we will make the allocation and we will end them. A couple of years later, JVM was created and in the brainstorming session, they didn't invite anymore the Romanian mother. And it was a good thing now because uh, the objects are created uh, by us, but it, they are freed automatically, but by one thing called garbage collector. And why did I wrote here major garbage collector and not garbage collector? This, this is a little bit of a tease and you'll find out in future slides. I think the best uh, definition that I can give you on a memory leak, it's, uh, uh, it's a visual one. And um, uh, it is represented by the blue part over here. So a memory leak, it's, uh, it's an object that we have in the memory that is referenced, but is not used anymore and we don't use it anymore. And in order to understand why a memory leak uh, uh, can appear and how can we solve it, we need to go further on on why the garbage collector is not cleaning up these uh, these objects. So let's imagine. Uh, let's uh, let me give you an example of how and a visual graphical one on how the object may appear in the heap and in the stack. So on the on the lower part over here. Um, just let me get my mouse back, okay? So on the lower part over here, we have the stack, okay? And on the above part, we have the heap. And when we actually declare our object, the X variable goes on the stack and the actually uh, object goes on the heap. And you can see it, uh, this, uh, this as a tree and one keyword that will be important for the rest of the uh, presentation, it will be garbage collector root, GC root. And why is this important? To give you a, a very small definition of GC root, GC roots are, uh, are preventing the garbage collector for the objects that are not used to be deleted. Meaning, if this object over here, so this object, if it has a GC root and it has, the garbage collector will not delete it. But over here, I have an object that doesn't have a garbage collector root, so it doesn't have, and the garbage collector will clean this object. So let me uh, tell again, garbage collector is preventing the object to be cleared from the heap if it has a reference from the object. So it will look like this. Let me go to the next slide. Yeah, demo gods definitely have, has something, are upset a little bit. I don't know why. Okay, this is like this. So the difference is that these objects are deleted because the garbage collector didn't find any GC root. Over here, we have a little bit of uh, uh, special reference that I will talk to, uh, with you uh, on future slides. Okay, let's go a little bit further. And to give you an actual uh, example with the code, uh, as an example, we will read only the first node from an XML document. So in this example, uh, I will go on the left part with the code and on the right part with, uh, with a graphical representation of how the heap memory will look like. So uh, I'm using a library from W3C. I'm reading an XML document. And in the moment that uh, I'm initializing and calling this method, on the stack, we have the variable doc and on the heap, the library creates the XML document and creates uh, and loads the, the nodes inside the XML document. And with the nodes, it creates double reference to it. Okay, so what I wanted uh, from this example is to read the first node. In order to do this, okay, I'm calling uh, the first child of the document and uh, uh, you can see over here that the child is having a reference to the first node. Now I'm removing the reference from the XML document to the first node, and then I'm also removing the reference to the XML document. And you can see here an easy example of a memory leak because my initial need was only to get 
this one. So the child, so variable child with the object of the first node. But actually what I have in the memory, it's the entire XML document because of a reference that are, is it still used? So in this case, the garbage collector root is the child. So the second node and the XML document and the rest, uh, rest of the nodes, these ones are not cleaned up because they have a garbage collector root. In order for them to clean up, I need to also delete this reference. Uh, this is a particular case of this library. So uh, I wanted to only give you an example of what a GC root is. And GC root can be of many types. Uh, GC roots uh, usually are live threads and they are local vari uh, variables or method parameters that are on the stack. Another uh, uh, type, uh, there are some system classes. So there are static fields that are in uh, in the JDK, in the uh, root of Java, that also have a reference to my instance. I can also have some monitor objects, uh, some GNI memory leaks, uh, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of types, but uh, our focus today and most probably your memory leaks are coming from this free. Uh, and uh, on to the today live demo, we will focus only on the first two, okay? If you have any question, don't uh, use the YouTube channel and I will try to keep up with your questions. Okay, so we've talked till now, we've talked about uh, um, garbage collector routes. We've talked about what types they are and let's talk a little bit about reference types. What are the reference? Usually what uh, reference types you are using in your uh, uh, usual day of, of a developer is strong or normal reference. So uh, in the previous example that I gave, there is a document that has a strong reference to the actually object in the heap. So if this object has a reference, it will not be cleared up. So if it has a reference from a GC root, Okay, so this is the GC root. It has a reference. The garbage collector will not clean up the object. And over here, there are some specialty. Uh, they are really, really nice. Uh, some soft reference. What is soft reference? It's almost like a normal reference, but in the moment, right in the moment that um, the JVM feels that it will go out of memory and it will crash, the garbage collector looks upon, okay, is this reference? a soft reference, if it is, it will clean up the object. So if it is a, a reference, uh, 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 a soft reference, it will clean up the object, but only on out of memory. Another uh, type of reference that, oops, another type of reference that uh, it can, uh, there, there is, it's weak reference. So the garbage collector, when it's triggered, uh, it will delete the object. So you can actually have in production something like this. I have the document, now it's, uh, uh, it's having a value and out of nowhere, it's null. Uh, this is what happens when we, you have a weak reference to your object and um, a garbage collector is triggered. So this is what I wanted to be represented by, the, uh, by this image, the weak reference and soft reference uh, with the dotted arrow in the previous slide. Another uh, type of reference that uh, there can be, it's a phantom reference, it's too complicated. But uh, I wanted only to point out this free, there are 99% uh, of the cases you won't use it. And this is because uh, they are very niche. They are uh, very rarely used, but it's, it's uh, very nice to know of them. You will mostly use the strong and normal reference. What are the symptoms of a memory leak? So we spoke about garbage collector root, we spoke about the uh, reference type and what are the symptoms? So uh, the first symptom that you may have uh, when you have a memory leak is that it works very fa fast when you start your application, but over time it's slowing down. Your old generation memory is increasing. And why did I say old generation and not memory increasing? You'll find out soon you know, in the next slide, but keep in mind that you only are interested in the old generation. Out of memory errors. Out of memory errors, there are a symptom of memory leak, but it's not necessarily 
a memory leak. And this is because um, try to start your Spring Boot application with only 10 megabytes. You will get an out of memory error. So if you get an out of memory error, that can also be that your application doesn't have enough memory at a certain mom moment of time. So you may need to allocate more memory to your application, but that can also be that is a memory leak. You can also have spontaneous crashes. Uh, this is how a memory leak may look like uh, if you are analyzing your old generation memory. So usually over here on the bottom part, over here, a garbage collector was triggered. And you can see that as an average, the memory is increasing. So this is how it may look as uh, from a um, um, graphical point of view, okay? If you analyze your uh, memory. Okay, now let's talk a bit about how the garbage collector is splitting up the memory. And why did I said old, old generation? So over here is the keyword that I spoke to you in the, uh, in, the in the slides before. So the the memory, the heap memory is split by two, by two, by young generation and old generation. This is in order to be as fast as possible for you. This heap memory is only for single garbage collector, serial garbage collector, parallel garbage collector, and concurrent mark and sweep garbage collector. So in the young generation memory, you'll get over here, the new objects will be instantiated. And once they are, uh, they leave a couple of garbage collector cycles, it will uh, it will end up in the long lived uh, uh, objects uh, memory. So over here in the old generation. And why did I said that is important to analyze the the old generation memory and not the, the entire memory? This is because the Eden can reach memory occupation of zero, but the old generation usually. And most probably you will have it zero only at the start of uh, the starting point of your application. After this will not be zero anymore, only the Eden. So I'm mostly interested in the graphical, uh, graphical uh, consumption of the old generation. So this why, because the memory leak will end up here. Okay. Um, this is how the memory uh, memory uh, looks when I have a, a G1 Z garbage collector Shenandoah, and the reason why uh, they switch from uh, from uh, from Java 8 to another garbage collector, this is because right now we have more and more application using more and more memory, even uh, hundreds of uh, gigabytes of RAM. So they needed to create a new garbage collector, and they are looking something like this. In this, in the previous slide, uh, we have a, a virtual continuous space allocation, and over here we have a more sparse allocation. Okay, over here, um, this is one of the most important uh, slides that I have. There are three slides that are important in, in the today presentation. And this is one of the most important one. And this is because if you want to analyze a memory leak, uh, you will need two flags. The first flag is heap dump on out of memory. And uh, this heap dump on out of memory in the moment that your application will crash, it will, it will do a heap dump. And this is the starting point of your investigation. If you don't have this heap dump, it's very hard for you to actually only analyze the code to, and figure out where the memory leak, memory leak came from. Um, the second uh, uh, flag that uh, I recommend uh, to you to make sure that you have this in production is garbage collector logs. The garbage collector logs, uh, uh, are, um, are uh, doesn't create so much overhead as you may think. Think the community and also documentation says that uh, there is a small amount of overhead that it creates. But if you have an application that uh, uses a uh, uh, is an extreme case of low memory, very low memory and low disk space, maybe uh, uh, don't use it. But usually they do recommend to use it. And what it what uh, these logs contains, they are 
time uh, times uh, that the garbage collector took. So uh, the minor garbage collector, major garbage collector, how much time it took to clean up, at what times, and uh, it also will help you if you want to do more performance tuning with the garbage collector. And the third, uh, uh, and the third flag that I recommend to use it, but only if you have a dynamic class loader, is max metaspace size or a perm size before Java 8. And this is because if you have a dynamic class loader, these flags will uh, help you mitigate, um, will mitigate if you have a problem with a class leaking load. If you have a class loading leak, this may, mit uh, may mitigate your pro problem. Okay, there are very uh, there are a lot of tools in the market on how to analyze uh, memory leaks. Uh, you have the free ones, you have the premium, and then you have the freemium. On the today uh, uh, on on the today uh, presentation, I will only use JVisual VM, and this is because until Java eight in even Java eight, you already have it bundled in the JDK. So. Uh, it's free and from a teaching perspective, it will also help you and also me in order to understand better the concepts. Okay, uh, my grandpa said to me one time, uh, I asked my grandpa, why, why doesn't he change his car? He has an old Dacia car and he doesn't want to change it. And he told to me, you know, if uh, my car will break, I know how to fix it. It doesn't have a lot of an ele electronics. It's not complicated, and I know how to fix it. The same is uh, with uh, JVisual VM. It's not the perfect way. And also using uh, uh, only JVisual VM is not the perfect way, but it will, uh, do, it will uh, do the job for today. In the JVisual VM, you have a plugin, and if you want to see uh, in a graphical way how the uh, how the memory looks, uh, memory heap memory looks like, I advise you to install this plugin. As as uh, I will show you later on uh, uh, how the heap memory uh, looks like. Okay, so enough uh, of the theory. Let's start with the fun part. Uh, I will uh, split this webinar in, in two. We will start with a post-mortem investigation and we'll give you two examples. And then we'll go to a preventive investigation and uh, we'll see how to, um, how to uh, find the memory leak before it crashes your application. Okay, let me... Okay, so as I told you about the JVisual VM, let me start a little bit. I have a um, over here. I have an application for you that a bad application that creates a memory leak. This is how the JVisual VM looks like, and you can find it as I said in the in any JDK until Java eight uh, over here in the JDK bin JVisual VM. If you open it. It will start like this. On the left part, you will have all the uh, all the JVM that are open on your uh, uh, on your computer, and you can also investigate uh, a JVM that is remote. You put uh, the host name of of your uh, remote uh, Java application, but you need to make sure that the JME export is exposed. So in my case, I have the standalone library. I will tell you a little bit more about it, but uh, let's look how the visual graphical representation of it looks like. So I told you a little bit about the old part, the hidden part. Uh, uh, you can see over here that this is a dying Java application because the old old uh, generation uh, memory has already filled up and the young generation is uh, almost reaching uh, the maximum um, space. Let's look how uh, how uh, garbage collector looks uh, how the JVisual VM looks like so if you want to uh, see the representation of your uh, of the heap memory you will need to go to tools plugins and over here you'll have on the available plugins because I already installed it I don't have it here so usually uh, uh, you have here basic information about your application what Java what the flags you open with. Uh, you have also the tab with the monitoring where you can also perform a garbage collector is a hint to give to the JVM to perform a garbage collector and to uh, have a heap. The CPU usage, the classes uh, and the threads. 
you can also see the threads if they are active, if they are uh, sleeping and so on. You can do sampling and profiling, but uh, this was only a preview of the J Visual VM. Let's start with the hard part and let's start with uh, an investigation that I've done a couple of months ago on a production, uh, on a production um, service. So over here, uh, I have uh, the heap dump of uh, application that that the purpose of it was to create uh, reports for customers. So these uh, reports were XLX files, Excel files, and it was a long running application that would create and then uh, send uh, to the customer reports and so on. Didn't have the customer impact, but it crashed uh, in production. So the moment that the uh, uh, application crashed, uh, if you have the, the flag and over here, um show system properties the demo gods uh they are again uh, against me i need to open another j visual vm sorry for that okay so let's do it uh, like this usually as i said uh it's it's an old car so if you use the j visual vm uh uh, bundled in your JDK for a for a for an application that has two gigabytes uh, of uh, heap, it's already computing. Uh, so I st I started uh, this heap dump loaded before the presentation. So it's thirty minutes. Usually it takes around twenty minutes to load a, uh, two gigabyte files, but uh, I don't know why it didn't load. Uh, load it yet. So I will uh, use the new Visual VM, which is uh, much faster. And uh, let's start like this. So you'll go to file, load, and you load your HProf file. Uh, now uh, it's doing a little bit of computation. Bear with me, just a. Uh... Okay, come on. Okay, let's uh, do the other way around. I wanted to start with the hard part, or then let's start with the easy part, with the uh, with the memory leak that uh, I've created in a library service. So, this is a library. I have a library that actually rents uh, rents books. So the process of a library is okay. Some books, uh, some books are coming back, and I'm uh, renting some other books. And you can see here that my library service is adding book and then Rent books, and this is a, a, a repeated process uh, with a while. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to do is file load. Let me open the file, the the hprof of the of the crashed application. So I have the summary, and then I'm going to classes. So over here, I will uh, I will look upon what classes were uh, were loaded at the moment of the crash. And one of the most important thing over here, it's over here in the very 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 small button, uh, and you have here the retain column. And why is this retain column important? And this is because uh, there is a difference between the retained uh, size and the size of the object. And if in, in order to understand, I need to go back to the presentation. And the difference between retain size and size of the object is that usually the size of the object is this one. So if I will take the, the size of, of this object, it will be this one. So this is the size of this object. But the, the retained size is this one. So I'm more interested in the retain size rather than the size of the uh, of the object. Hopefully it it computed. No, it did not. Uh, let's use the new one and we will see here the classes. And I'm pressing the objects. Okay, so I'm going to the objects to see what objects are uh, uh, are the most in my heap. So if I'm ordering by size, I can see that char is the most used object in uh, in my memory. But if I'm going by retain size, I can see that 
the linked hash map is the is the object with the retain size that occupies the most. And now what I'm going to do is actually look upon what instance, so I have 10,000 instance of this class that occupies 1.8 gigabyte. And now I, I'm, I, will go, I will look upon what, uh, ah, um, just a second. Yeah, I switched back to the new new J Visual VM and I uh, went back to the production uh, heap. Sorry for that. Um, uh, so over here, I have the production heap, 1.8 gigabytes of linked hash map. So let's look upon this and I can see that I have 10, uh, 10,000 uh, uh, instantiated linked hash map. And I need to order again by what is the biggest instance. So I, I can see here that I have a hash map that has 1.8 gigabytes. And now I will look upon this instance. What reference is it having? So if I'm opening over here, I can see that the GC root, so the, this hash map is not deleted because it has a reference and the lowest reference, if I go uh, on the three very, very lowest of root, the GC root of this hash map is delete on exit hook. And when uh, I investigated first, I didn't know what the delete on exit hook is. And uh, if you search on, uh, if you search, you will find out that Java has a static map that you can define uh, that if you have a file, you can say it delete when the Java will exit. So it's a map that is filling up something that will delete when the JVM will exit. So in my process, us, uh, and when you will do an investigation, we will look upon the GC root, and then with what is populated that object. So in this case, uh, you will see that in this, uh, in this table, in this uh, map, this map is populated by path to some reports. As you can see, some temp files to a template, to an XLX file. And from here, you'll, you'll need to start your investigation. No tool will tell you where actually the problem is, but every tool will give you the, uh, with what the, your biggest object is filled up with and what is the GC root. So from these two points, so from the reference and from the GC root, okay, so I have these two, over here on the left, I have the reference, delete on exit hook, and on the uh, and on the and the object is filled up with with some temp files. Over here, a colleague of mine helped me and investigated and discovered that uh, discovered that uh, in the code we have this part. So we uh, create some uh, workbooks, we write them, and then we dispose them. But the problem was actually from the library. And in this case, the GC root was a static field in the JDK because this map was filling up with path of, uh, of um, files, of temporary files to be deleted later on. But that, those files were already deleted. But the static field in the JDK was already holding up these temp files. So this was a production, um, production memory leak. Let's go to the next one, which is the simpler one. Um, Mircea, yes. one, yes. Uh, actually two little questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, um, Sorin asked if um, you recommend to use those GVM flags you showed us with um, keep dump on, on memory leak and the GVM logging on the, the GC logging uh, with every application, except the case that you actually mentioned, but I explained a bit yet. Um, the, the case in which you have very frequent garbage collection occurring and you um, you have um, a lot of logging happening. That the case, okay, that's an extreme case, but um, would you recommend adding those flags in every application and any Java application? I will recommend the first one. The first one I will dec definitely recommend in any production. This doesn't create any overhead. So the only overhead that this flag creates is the moment that your application is already crashing. So your application will already crash. So in the moment that it crashes, you don't care about overhead. And this is where an overhead will uh, will be made because it will put on your disk, uh, on your disk of the application when it runs, it will also create a heap dump. 
So over here on production, when it's running uh, normally, it will not, it doesn't create an overhead. It only creates when it will crash, but you don't care about it anymore. But with the garbage collector logs, it does create an overhead, but the documentation and the architects uh, tells that it's a very, very low overhead. And also I read it in the Java magazine, but I don't know how actually that uh, low it is. Uh, what I read in an extreme cases where you have JVM with uh, uh, 10 megabytes or uh, very, very low memory, only then in extreme cases, you may think about, okay, should I put or should I not put the, uh, these flags? Okay, makes perfect sense, really. Uh, now, um, another question. Um, if this issue that you're showing us uh, have anything to do with the famous, I don't know, the high memory usage of POI. But if I understood it correctly, uh, the memory wasn't filing up in the, in the Apache POI library itself, right? So correct me if I'm wrong. Can you please explain this a bit? So there is a static field in the JDK. So this field, it's a hash map. In that JDK has and is filling up with path to this temporary uh, so Apache boy Apache boy library over here we're using a, an Apache boy that actually is sending some temp files a path to a, a path of a temp file to these static fields and these static fields of the JDK is filling up with a lot of paths, a lot of strings, actually. But the actually objects and the actually files in the background, in the temp uh, uh, folder of, uh, of the operating system were deleted. Mm -hmm. And it was a kind of a, a bug of a push boy that was actually were, was not deleting the path of a static field from Java. I see. I see. So, so now, Usually, usually the memory leaks are coming from a, from a, a, from a mistake of a developer. This is uh, mostly the case. But in this case, the Apache POI file was, uh, this library is not recommended for long running application. And in this case was an application that was creating thousands of reports per day and was uh, up and running for a couple of weeks. And given this, you'll have a map filling up with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of strings of pet files. And in the end, it crashed uh, with an out of memory because uh, the hash map with this pet become bigger and bigger until it reached 1.8 gigabytes only with string. Cool. Quite cool. Okay, that's clear, that clear the question. Thank you very much. Please continue. Thanks for the answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry again for the demo gods. Uh, they are angry at me, but uh, hopefully not will be better. I'm now going back to the actual example that uh, I created with the library service. It's a very simple example. Let me explain to you a little bit about the code. Actually, I have a library uh, in which I put library, uh, I rent, uh, I rent uh, books and then uh, I added them to the shelf. And over here I created uh, the most uh, biggest mistake a developer can do. Um, when I'm adding and removing from a hash map uh, of the library, uh, this book leak, I have one book that is actually bad because it's overriding the hash code and every time it will uh, give me a new hash code. This, when you uh, and when you want to uh, remove this book from the shelf, it will not find it because the hash code every time is changing. So this is a very easy memory leak to, to, to create. And in order to investigate how in this uh, code, even if you don't know it, even if you don't know it, uh, how to investigate it, let's start again with, uh, with the J Visual VM. Okay, so file, load and now i'm going to the to the to my simple example of library memory leak okay uh the the things the thing that i'm going first i'm going to the objects i'm looking up upon the retain size 
it's computing. So uh, just a second. Come on. Computing GC roots. It takes a while. Even with the other tool, it will take a couple of minutes, but not that much. Computing retain sizes. And one thing that you, you may want to do at first is you have over here a regex. Usually because I said it's uh, usually the developer fault that is a memory leak and usually it does not happen uh, because of a library. Usually what I'm doing first is going upon uh, and uh, looking upon what uh, what uh, um, what is the biggest object from my uh, package. So Kam Mircha has the book leak. This is the biggest uh, occupation of my memory. But if I'm going by the retain size, I can see, and I'm filtering out the regex. I can see that this hash map has the biggest instantiation. And usually the biggest object will be the culprit of your memory leak. So what I'm going to do is select your biggest retain size object and open it. Then you'll want to look upon the GC root and the fields that it may have. Compute to merge. Okay. So I'm I'm looking upon the the biggest one and I want to see what is actually the GC root. And I can see here this hash map is keeping alive by a GC root called library service. Okay, so I know that the GC root is library service. So I must go in my in this class library service because this holds the GC root. And then I need to make sure the fields, what, what this contains, what is it is filled with. And I can see that over here, the hash map is filled with book leaks. And now I need to go from, and need to make a link between library service and book leaks. So I'm going into the code, I'm going to the library service, and I will look upon book leak. And over here, you'll need to put your developer, uh, developer investigation hat and see, okay, from where, from where did the, did the memory leak came from? Over here, you will need to go to the book leak and see that the, the overriding of the hash code was uh, done improperly. Okay. Questions. Um, okay, if they are not, um, okay, this was actually the example, uh, simple example of how a GC root with a local variable uh, can uh, can appear. So this was a GC root of a local variable like uh, a hash map that I have it in the library service. Let's uh, do now, we'll go to the second part of, uh, of the webinar in order how to do preventive investigation. And over here, I put a, a picture with a movie that I liked, Minority Report, and it's similar with what we were going to do. It's a, a movie that appeared 10 years ago with uh, Tom Cruise. Uh, the purpose of this movie was that um, they actually find the culprits, find the criminals be because before it actually happened the crime. So this is the same thing that we're gonna, going to do. Uh, we're trying to find the memory leak before the crime and uh, meaning the crash of the application will happen. And uh, let's see how we were going to do. I will start now um, my library website. And over here, the first thing that uh, you may want to do it is the same. So uh, in my library service, I have two endpoints. I have an endpoint that rents the book that creates the leak. And then I have a list of authors that creates a very big object. And I will come to you a little bit later on. Why did I create it a big object? So how to do a, an investigation on an application that uh, you can have in production or you are in testing mode? or uh, you want to see if an endpoint has a memory leak or not. The first thing that you are going to do is go into your JVisual VM and open your application. So over here, I have com Mircha website library. Uh, I have the monitor. And what I want to do now first is actually call my endpoint. So if I, 
let me drag a Chrome. I'm calling the the endpoint that is uh, creating a very big um, object. Then I'm uh, calling the rent book leak. The second, the this endpoint that I want to do. So uh, call at least one, call at least once your endpoint that you want to test or your, I don't know, part of the code that you want to test. So this is a, then go, go to the profiler, press performer garbage collector, wait for the memory to drop and then create a heap dump. Okay, now go back to your application and test that part of the code that you want to test for a memory leak at least three times. As many as you want, but at least three. And uh, I will tell you a little bit later on. And then call another point, another uh, endpoint that is heavy or create a mock-up uh, endpoint that is creating a lot of objects in, uh, in, your, um, in your garbage collector. So now I'm going to do the same thing, perform a garbage collector and do a heap dump. The reason why I uh, I uh, called again a heavy endpoint is that when you actually call your uh, uh, call your uh, garbage collector, garbage collector is a little bit lazy, and it's like uh, cleaning up your room. Who is uh, who will uh, who will visit you today? If uh, nobody will visit you and you want to do a cleanup, you only do, let's say, not superficial, but you won't clean on your drawers uh, under your bed. But if your mother-in-law comes, you will definitely clean under your bed. So this is what uh, this very big uh, endpoint, uh, list authors, is like uh, your mother-in-law is coming and visiting you. So the perform garbage collector, when you, uh, you, when you call an endpoint, uh, looks in the memory and says, okay, I have a big input of memory coming. I need to do a thorough uh, cleanup. And this is because uh, we will do a comparison between the two moments of in time that we did the, uh, the hip dump. So now we will do a comparison between the hip dump done at, the, at this point and the, the hip dump done at this point just uh, compare with another one. Okay, so now I have the, comp the comparison between these two and I'm pressing com.mircha. And the moment that I'm filtering out with my packages, usually if I don't have a memory leak, everything should be here plus zero. But if I have the number of uh, of uh, the number of uh, tests that I've done also on uh, on my endpoint. So I press refresh of my uh, and I called my uh, my endpoint four times. When I did a comparison between the first moment in time and the second moment in time, if I have some instantiation instantiation over here, this is a memory leak. It's a potential memory leak. But if I didn't uh, actually call a heavy endpoint the garbage collector may be lazy and say, okay, I don't need, my mother-in-law isn't coming today. I don't want to delete everything because you have one gigabyte of RAM. I don't need to clean up, uh, look, uh, 140 bytes of, uh, uh, 140 bytes of objects. So you see, that's why you you will need to call uh, when you do preventive work and you have a very small object, you need to do preventive work, a preventive uh, call, uh, a uh, heavy endpoint when you do preventive investigation. And from here, you need to start the same, the again process. You need to go uh, open it and see who has the reference to it and what, what it contains. So over here, it will lead me to the, to the library service. Questions? Okay. Um, I'll, let's go a little bit further on. So let me give you the cheat sheet. Uh, this is uh, the second uh, most important uh, uh, part of this presentation. So remember slide number 16, 25 and 26 because it has the flags and then it has the cheat sheet. So call the endpoint one time, perform garbage collector, per, uh, wait for memory to drop and then uh, uh, create a heap dump, call endpoint at least three times 
and then call a heavy endpoint because garbage collector is a little bit lazy. So you want to force to do a mother-in-law cleanup. Then perform again the garbage collector, wait for memory to drop, press heap dump, and do a comparison between these two heap dumps. Do the, fi do the filtering between only on your package. And if you have uh, over there an, uh, the number of uh, instantiation uh, the same uh, with the same number that uh, you tested your endpoint, it's most probably that you have a memory leak. When you do the post-mortem, this also applies with the preventive, go to the classes tab, go to and activate the retained, uh, retained column, sort them by the biggest retained size class and go to the instantiating view, over there in the instantiation view, you will need to sort again by the retain size. With the new application, it was a little bit different, but uh, uh, but is it is the same principle with all the tools. Right click and uh, look upon the nearest GC root. So you want to see which is the root that is holding up your object, and also it may help you. Uh, to go on the stack of uh, of uh, of the GC root, and from the GC root go up in the stack trace until you find something familiar or start start digging. Maybe it's a static class from the Java, but or maybe it's something from your class. And then is the easy part: fix the memory leak. Some uh, useful stuff that I recommend you is reading this book. Uh, uh, you can understand better the heap memory, the garbage collector, and how to use JVisual VM and other tools. If you have a dynamic class loader, it is an old uh, um, presentation of Matthias Yader about this. It's still uh, viable, even though it has eight years old. If you want to see how our multiple tools analysis in practice, follow Jack Shiraz because he, he's a very smart guy. If you want to uh, use the example that I gave you with the library, uh, over here is the source uh, uh, and a link to the GitHub. If you want also to contact me, have questions and uh, feel free to chat uh, by mail and or any social media accounts. Thank you for uh, your uh, for your very big number today, 150. I'm amazed and I'm humbled by your by your big number that uh, you took your time to listen to me today. And I hope that uh, you learned something new today and you like it, you liked it. Super cool, super cool, thanks a lot. We do have some remaining questions in the chat. Thanks a lot, amazing session, very nice. Uh, I must uh, I must confess that I've seen it before. I saw how good that this was and I wanted to, sh um, I was to, to, to share it with you also. There are some leftover questions, but right now I will pass the link to the Zoom meeting, just a second to enable stuff, some stuff here. And I will, if you want to join and ask your question directly on the Zoom, please feel free to do that. Otherwise, uh, we will uh, solve the questions anyway with that you, yeah, just one second. So if you want to uh, go enter with the camera or audio, uh, use the Zoom. If you want to, if you feel more comfortable with uh, with the YouTube chat, uh, stay over there and uh, put your uh, comments over here. And uh, thank you very much for your uh, for your kind words. Thank you. There, there, is, there is a question here. Um, um, the question is, um, will it help to set uh, a lower size for the heap in order to force a garbage collector to happen instead of? instead of implementing a very heavy endpoint. But let me maybe, maybe rephrase a bit the question according to my... Uh, 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 I, I lost to Victor, but uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, there are two ways of, uh, two ways of testing this. Uh, I don't know who, uh, who uh, if I have a problem audio connection or Victor has, but yeah, you can also, you okay. can also... Yeah, now we are here. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I got this. Um, the, 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 the thought, I think it is, would it be interesting to lower the maximum heat size in order to get the leak visible earlier? Or I guess I guess it, the question is not in production. Lowering the maximum heat size in production will get the out of memory more frequent, of course. But 
maybe during the investigation time to make to, to give it just I don't know, 50 megabytes of heap and then run it for a while and see if it crashes. Will, will, will this make sense to you? I mean, Sometimes yes, sometimes uh, no, because when you actually, it depends on the size of the leak. So in this case, uh, my leak was only uh, 500 bytes. So if you lower your heap, it may help you, but not necessarily. Because also the garbage collector sometimes is lazy and uh, says, okay, you still have 400 mega or 500 or 100 mega. So in comparison, 100 mega with 50 bytes is not that much, but definitely is uh, making the garbage collector algorithm to actually do the mother in law cleanup. So do a, a very thoroughly cleanup in, uh, in the old generation memory. Okay. Um, good, okay. So in theory, it might make sense sometimes, but yeah. Okay, one more question. Interesting question that <laughs> I think you could get um, uh, a, a prize if this were true, but who knows? Can static code analysis detect memory leaks? Haha. <laughs> How about this one? I would like to buy that tool. <laughs> <if it works. laughs> But I think there are some. <laughs> there are some. Uh, I, I keep in my mind just now, and I will share with you. Um, there is a rule on, on um, wait, 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 rules, sonar. There is one interesting rule. Uh, I will paste the, the link right now in the chat and on, on, on YouTube. It says that for the, the rule for sonar, let me share my screen a bit. So yeah, like this way. Which screen? This one. Do, do, uh, I'm now out of the shadow, so let me check if it's all okay. Yes, it should be. Huh? Can you see my screen? Not yet, huh? How much do you take? Share. What, one second. Screen two. Let's see if I can manage to share over you. Here. Um, member of spring components should be injected. Ah, not yet. Not yet live. Come on. Come on, come on. No. Wrong screen. <laughs> Uh, it has a lag, but uh, I think you would see it eventually. Member of string components should be injected, it says, the rule for sonar means. Uh, it means that if you, if you put in a controller, something which is instant variable in, as inside of a spring managed singleton, then this smells like leak. And if that thing has the type map, there you go. You are about to commit a lot of memory. So more than that, I don't know. I don't know of any other trick. Major, maybe you've seen other things. No. No, it's a very good question. And uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I really don't know. It's a very good question. And now uh, I cannot sleep uh, this night. <laughs> I really think through because uh, it's, uh, yeah. These things are very hidden away from your side, typically. I mean, you won't just see them in plain. Remember the example which I gave you with the library, which put in this uh, hash map to, of temporary. I mean, who, who would know? Who, who would have known that? I mean, well, it's a bit big. Um, so uh, now uh, there is also another good question. Do we do some automated tests with the large data sets or even with similar kinds uh, and to find memory leaks? So what can you do? is actually you can use your unitary test or your uh, integ uh, integration test, or if you have a, a big test, what you can do actually is you can, um, um, can you see me? Yeah, so you can actually run three times your integration tests, then do a heap dump and see if without closing the JVM, because usually you start the JVM at the start of your application, at the end of your uh, test, you end them. But do this process three times, open the JVisual VM or your tool and see at the end of uh, the test, if you have from your package, three classes instantiation, instantiations. So yeah. You can uh, use your uh, your test in order to find uh, to find uh, memory leaks. Very nice. Uh, folks, any other questions? Very nice questions. And uh, a hot topic, 
hard to investigate, hard to reason about, but any other ideas? Uh, yeah, it's a Turing, <laughs> yeah, 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 correct. It's a Turing complete problem. Will it, will it terminate? <laughs> yeah, it's the, the, the same kind of problems. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, folks, uh, remember in case there, that uh, you have any other leftover questions, wait, there is one more. Would the set of endurance tests bring up the memory? Would the set of endurance tests bring up the memory? Leaks? Yeah, definitely would, uh, will uh, show more of the memory leaks, but you need to see if, if you instantiate different, uh, different parts of your endpoints, no. Because if you have, if you call over and over and over again your endpoints, yes, definitely it uh, it will help showing you uh, if you have a memory leak in your code. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it it, it makes sense. I mean, um, um, repeating a call is is the problem because the first time you call it, some components might get initialized, some thread pools should be maybe. Uh, enlarged and so on. So it counts when you call it frequently or in a, in a, in a, in a loop. Mm -hmm. nice. So definitely if you have a, if you know that you have a prototype over there and you instantiate it, instantiate it, and then you do a garbage collector and you know that the garbage collector came and you still have a lot of in, uh, instances of your class, it's a very uh, big chance that you have a memory leak. <laughs> 